Hello friends and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and in today's video I am going to be putting together the last four spreads in the traveler's notebook that I am making as a Mother's Day gift for my mom. So this one is documenting a trip to Montana using the Feed Your Craft Explore More travel themed kit. So uh, I have already filmed and um, published three videos in this album. So if you haven't caught any of those yet, I'll make sure to link the playlist for you up at the eye. And uh, each of those each of those three videos cover four spreads each. So I have the first four spreads and then the second four spreads and then the third four spreads, which is what I just did last time. So today we are working on the end of this album. I have I have three more full page spreads to go and then the conclusion page. And then once I have that done, I will go ahead and get this stitched together so that it can be a complete album ready to go and be given to my mom. So what we're going to do before we get into the actual assembly process or, you know, physical process of putting this together, first I'm going to take you over to my computer to show you a couple of the pieces that I altered digitally before coming over here and getting everything, you know, printed and ready to go. So I'm going to bring you over there, show you how I did that in case it's something that you want to try as well, and then I will meet you back over here at my craft table to go ahead and get everything put together. All right, friends, welcome back over to my desktop here one more time as we go through the last four spreads for the Traveler's Notebook I'm creating using the Explore More kit from, from Feed Your Craft. So for today, before we get into the actual physical putting together of the projects or the spreads, first I want to show you how I took some of the digital elements from that Feed Your Craft kit and made them work for me in a Traveler's Notebook size. So let's go ahead and open up the stuff that we're going to need for spread number 13. Now for this one, I decided to do a design that was a little bit different than normal. So I've got a photo that you can see here that's taking up the first half, but you know what? I'm going to actually open up the um, PSD file and I need my rulers. Um, in case you don't know, you can see I don't have any rulers around the outside of my page here. So you can add them by hitting control or command and the letter R will add your rulers in. Or if you go up to view, you can also view rulers. I must have just accidentally hit a button I didn't mean to hit. So um, over here, I've got my full page photo, four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And then I've got a photo of my mom and my aunt here. That's 3.75 by 3.75. So then I created a journaling card that is also 3.75 by 3.75. So let me show you how I made this card. First of all, we're gonna open up the three by four version of this one. And what we'll do is we'll create a new canvas that will be 3.75 inches by 3.75 inches at 300 pixels per inch. Let's go ahead and create that now. Okay, so next what I did, I just wanna double check myself here. Yes, next what I did is I went ahead and I copied this and then I'm going to paste it directly onto the page here. Now, I like um, I like the scale of this here on the page. Um, do I move that? I don't think I have that moved up any higher. I like where this is, where this is. So what I'm going to do, and you know what, actually before we do this, let's, um, let's undo that. Go back to our, our page here. Let's use that marquee tool. We need to deselect control D. And I'm just going to pull off this piece right here. So I'm going to highlight this place, right click, and I'm going to cut it out of the card. So now we can take that off and we just have this card right here. So now let's grab the background, control A for select all, control V for copy, go back over to our new canvas, control uh, V. Control C for copy, Control V for paste. I don't know if I just said that weird or not, um, <laughs> but just in case. Okay, so now we're going to transform. So Control and the letter T. And all I'm going to do is move it over to the right side of the page. So it looks pretty good just like this. Now we'll merge these two layers together, which you can do by selecting both layers in the bottom, right clicking and merge layers, 
or you can go up to the menu here that says layer and merge layers, or you can just hit control E. Uh, control shift and E will only merge whatever is visible. Control E will merge everything. So just, you know, in case you were ever curious about that. So with my marquee tool still selected, I'm going to come up to the top here and select on top of all of these lines past the uh, gray line here, which is basically the, um, I can't think of what that's called, but the cut line essentially. And we're going to right click and layer via copy. Then grab our move tool and let's just move those lines all the way to the edge. So this makes our card a little bit wider and then uh, we can merge those layers yet again. Now, if we go back to our original card, not there, right here, and let's bring this one back into view, I want to copy the place, the place layer here. So I've got it copied, let's deselect the whole thing. So I've got layer one, we're going to control C copy, and then we're going to control V paste, and then this I can put up here wherever I want it to go so that we can write in the place. I could also make this bigger if I wanted to. I could have kept it as part of the card. And then um, when I went to make it bigger, I could have selected, like, let's say right here so that, do I have the marquee? No, let's grab the marquee so you can see the marching ants. So I could have selected it from right about here. And then when I made the thing bigger, that box would have become bigger as well but I kind of liked the scale of it and I thought it would be cool to have some extra space. I could also move it so the extra space is on this side and then maybe that gives me a section for some kind of embellishment or who knows. Or I could put it low and then there could be an embellishment up here. You know, it's just kind of fun to play with placement because then it gives you a little bit more variety for how you can use it later. Um, and it looks like when I originally did this, I did go ahead and keep the place there. So you can see the place box is longer, um, which is interesting to see that now that I know that's what I did. So I made this a little bit harder on us this time, but hey, now you know how you can customize that card even further. So I guess I'm going to call that a win. Okay, so that is spread number, I don't even know what we're on, 13. So next let's go to spread number 14 has nothing. Um, 14, my plan, do I even say on here? My plan is to, there were, there were a bunch of tags that came in the ephemera pack. So my plan is to use those tags to make a giant page of like tags and journaling. Um, so all I did is I just put a note to myself here. So I would remember that when I actually go to make that spread today. Cool. That one's easy peasy. Spread number 15, I made, uh, this adventure log card into a, traveler's notebook sized paper and for mine um, I'll show you the actual spread of it for mine I am going to add some journaling lines in it but only up to a certain point because I'm also planning to put two pictures in it as well so to create the card itself we're going to open an eight and a quarter sorry four and a quarter by eight and a quarter canvas at 300 pixels per inch there we go now we'll grab this card from um, the four by six card and we're going to paste it in here transform it that's not what I want transform it so that we can get it to shrink down and fit the width of our page now this one's going to take a little bit of finagling we're going to basically um, I'm going to first merge all those layers but we're, we're going to be doing a lot of like layer via copying here and then merging so we're going to use our marquee tool which is underneath the move tool and then we're going to draw a box by uh, clicking and then holding down the mouse button and dragging a box over to the left and all the way to sorry over to the right I do know directions and down to the bottom so now we have darn it now we have our marching ants going all the way around right click and layer via copy then we can grab our move tool and we're going to move this down until we get to that location stuff again right about here and then we'll merge these layers together so we can see down in the bottom, it's all one layer. So for that, I did control E, no, sorry, control shift and the letter E. Now let's do that again. So marquee tool, we're going to select from under the line all the way to the bottom. I've got our marching ants, right click and layer via copy. Then we'll grab that move tool and we'll move it and see, I'm probably gonna have to do one more. Yep. And we can merge it all together. Last time, I don't need as much this time, so we'll just go a square, <laughs> rectangle, layer via copy, 
move tool and then we'll move that until we get it down to the bottom yay right about there so then we can merge this all together and there is my card now we're going to pretend that i've got photos that are going to like right here and then let's add some lines so um i'm going to make sure i've got black this time selected and we're going to grab this line tool which is on the left hand side it's your shape tool there could be rectangles circles lines polygons whatever if the line tool is not the one you see you can click and hold on it and then the sub menu will show up where you can select which one you want i'm going to grab the line tool i've got mine set to black five pixels and then uh, my weight is three pixels so holding down the shift button which I'm going to say um, the reason I hold the shift button down is because it forces my line to be straight. I'll show you why that's important here in a second. So I'm going to click and hold down my mouse button and drag a line all the way across my spread to where I like it, unclick and hit the enter button. If I didn't hold down the shift button and I tried to do this, um, then it's just a matter of like trying to perfectly, it's not impossible, but it is just hard to perfectly line it up to be straight. Um, holding down the shift button forces a straight line. So uh, we'll grab the move tool now because we have one line that looks good. Let's make sure we've got that shape. Um, you know what? Before we do anything, let's come down here to the shape layer. Right click on the shape layer and let's just go ahead and rasterize it. This lets it, it makes it easier to edit the thing if you need to. So now that we have the shape tool or shape tool, shape layer selected, we're going to copy it. Control C and paste it. Control V. So now we have another line. Then we can transform it. Control V. And I'm looking for my pointer to look like an arrow, a single arrow, not an up and down arrow. So not um, this one. If you click it and drag it, it will make it, it'll, it just, that's not what we want. So, so instead you just want it to be a single arrow click and then we're going to drag it up and bring it in line with our other line up at the top about as far apart as you want it to be. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and select both of them now, transform that, make sure we're centered, which that's what that pink guideline is telling me. And then we'll copy the two of them together and paste the two of them together like so. And then we're going to transform those to bring them up as well. So now we have four lines. Now I'm going to select all four. We'll copy those, we'll paste them, we'll transform them in order to move them. That looks pretty good, maybe there. And then I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna paste again until I get this the way I like it. Um, and I might have enough room for like one more at the bottom. So maybe we'll put one more line here for me to go ahead and move. It's probably, that's probably as good as it gets. So this is what we're going to be doing for spread number 15. And then I will put boxes or I'll put photos here at the bottom. Okay, let's leave this up just in case. I don't think I need it, but just in case. Now, um, the last one I've got for you is by far the most complicated, but it turns out so cool when you do it. This one, I am taking a four by six card here and I'm going to turn this into a, um, a traveler's notebook page. So four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So here is the final page. So you can see that it started like this and I turned it into this. So what we're going to do first, uh, we're going to unlock the layer. Then we're going to grab our marquee tool. We're going to start in the upper right hand corner and we're going to draw a box until we get to three by four, which we'll see if we can get to that perfectly. We might not be able, oh, oh, yes. Three by four, darn it, that's not quite right. <laughs> it is, I told you, it is complicated. Okay, so we want three by four, come on, right there, three by four, cool. So with this selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to layer via cut. So now I've got this section and I have this section. Okay, so uh, let me just remember here. Now on the original section, so let's hide that one. So on this one, I also wanna grab the on this date and I will um, right click on it and I'm going to layer via cut 
in order to grab that off. So now we've got this section left, right? Um, and then, and then we'll go from there. Let's just get started layering the things up and then we'll figure out what else we need. So we're going to start with this portion right here, which is the um, left side. So I'm going to copy that and paste it. I'm then going to transform it and make it fill up the entire page, move it up to the top like so. So that's pretty good. Now we're going to go back to that explore more and this time I want the date or on this date. So we're going to copy that, paste it, and then we can move that up by the W, right? So now we've got a place to add the date. Okay, so now on this we've got location, we've got a, a section here for journaling, we've got this weather section, and this which is going to be the bottom of the page. So what I want to do next is I want to add in this I was here with in current mood. And then I'm also going to create some space here. Mine, I did add some lines to. Um, and also, I have a section here to put a photo. The one thing I did not add to mine is on the original, there are two sections of, of checks, uh, check boxes. So I only added this section. I didn't add that. I was like, whatever. It, I could have, but it would have been a little bit more complicated, and I just didn't feel like it. So I just let there be three potential checkoff boxes. <laughs> but I do want I was here with and current mood. So we're going to grab this marquee tool. I'm going to go on the inside of, I think I do this right. Let me make sure that, um, yes, yes, I do do that. So we're going to come back over here. We're going to grab the I was here with and current mood uh, sentiments. Then we can go ahead and right click and layer via, let's just layer via, oh, you do have to make sure you have the right section selected. There we go. And layer via cut. Okay. So now that's going to give me just this. Okay. So then we need the move tool. We can... Um, copy that in here in a second. First, let's do what we want to do here. Um, I do make this section quite a bit bigger. So what I want to do is to grab my marquee tool and I'm going to um, grab from underneath the W all the way to the bottom, right click and layer via copy. Of course, I don't have this selected. There we go. Layer via copy. <laughs> Then we'll grab the move tool and we're going to move this down until, you know, we hit the section that we've already seen. And then we'll go ahead and merge all these layers together. Now I'm going to take my eraser tool and erase this location sentiment. I only need that on there once. Um, then I will grab my marquee tool. This time I'm gonna grab from underneath or on, sorry, on top of the word weather all the way down to the bottom. We're going to right click and layer via copy and then use our move tool to move this down. So now we have like two weather sections, right? And again, I don't need a second weather section, so we can just not do that. We can, um, let's just paint over it. So we'll grab our, our eyedropper. We're going to use this white color paintbrush and we're just going to paint over the weather sentiment to make room for hopefully where our other sentiments going to fit. So I was weird. I was weird. I was here with, I'm having trouble speaking today in current mood. So I'm going to make sure I have this layer selected. Control C for copy. Let's go back over to that new card and control V for paste. So uh, one of the things that you'll notice is that this is a bit smaller because we did make this all bigger, right? So, um, and you know, the other thing that I might want to do is have another line of separation, which I believe I did in the original too. I guess not. I just have somewhat of a line of separation. But let's say I wanted a full line of separation. So here's what I could do is um, keep this here. I was here with in current mood, although I feel like that could be a teeny bit bigger even. Like maybe that. Yeah, I kind of like that better. So we're gonna keep that that way. Now uh, let's merge everything together. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use my marquee tool to grab 
just kind of trying to judge space here. I just want to grab this line and we're going to layer via copy. And then we can take that and move it down so that it separates our sentiments here. And I might have grabbed a section that was just a bit too thick, but you know, it's hard to tell. So I think it's totally fine. So we've got, um, I was here with current mood. This all looks good. We can merge this all together. And now I wanna get this down to the bottom, which means that this section can be a bit bigger even still. So let's go from underneath the location all the way to the bottom, right click layer via copy, grab our move tool and move this. Does it fit? Oh yeah, all the way to the bottom. Perfect. And then merge those layers together. Now, if you want to add journaling lines to this, you would do it the same way I did for this one. For instance, I could just grab these and copy them and paste them over here. Uh, nope, I want to move you. Um, so I could just use these. I can shrink them a bit if I want so that they fit down here, right? And then I could copy that, paste it again, and move those. I'm not sure where they end at this point, but let's just pretend it's there. Um, delete the ones that I don't want, which would be like those. And then when I zoom in, we can see all these lines, but obviously these ones I don't want, right? So we could just take all these shapes down in the layers panel here, select all of them, but not the background. And then right click and merge those layers together. With that selected, we can grab the marquee tool and take out an even portion. So I'm thinking like right here. And then we can cut that and delete it. And then that gives us really straight lines that we can work with here. So that, see what I mean? That that was very complicated, but you know what? We got it to work, it looks good. Um, again, my screen gets kind of funky when it zooms out too much where you can't see all those lines. That's a little bit better. But there is our wild and wonderful moments. This, I, I always like to end my travel albums with a wrap up page, with just a journaling page to wrap up kind of facts and feelings of the trip in and of itself. So that's essentially what this is going to be. All right, so that is all of the spreads here, or at least the digital work for our spreads today. So what we'll do is I will um, close this down and I will meet you back over at the craft table where we'll get today's pages actually assembled in a physical form. So I'll see you guys over there. Okay, so we are back over at my table now and ready to get to work on these last couple of spreads. I am so excited to get this album finished up and packaged up and given to my mom. I know she's just going to love it. So for this first spread, I've got this large photo of my mom out. I don't know if they were snowshoeing or just hiking in the snow or what was happening, but um, I really loved this picture of her. And then I've also got a second picture there of my mom and my aunt. So I had printed those in square form where I'm just going to add them onto, um, onto the right side of the spread, although I may pull out some of my traveler's notebook pattern papers in order to find something to put behind them. Then for the photo on the left side, I pulled out a die cut that says wild, and then I also pulled out a banner that says all the good things, I believe and just layered those up together. And then I'll stick that one back in my book and set that one to the side. Now we're going to move on to the right-hand side, which is with these two square, um, square elements. So the journaling card and the photo. Here's where I'm going to pull out my pattern papers and just look for one that's going to work. I have this one right here that I choose right away. It's a yellow, um, a yellowish stripe. So it's a subtle pattern, which I like because it helps to break up all of the white, but it doesn't necessarily detract from the items that I'm placing on top. Whereas if I would have picked something really bold or really, really busy, um, it would have been really distracting from the rest of the spread. And that one is, that one is done. So that was a really, really quick and simple spread. For this next one, this one I didn't do anything for it digitally. Um, 
because I knew from the beginning that when I opened up this die cut pack and saw all of these tags that I wanted to use the tags to create my own pattern paper with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer them up here on a piece of traveler's notebook size just regular copy paper. So this is four and a quarter wide by eight and a quarter tall and then I'm going to layer up all of those tags get them on here so that um so that we can see for the most part everything I will have them interact with the top and the bottom edges of the paper um but yeah I just I love the way that this looks I love the way that tags look. They are definitely one of my favorite embellishments, one of my favorite types of die cuts. And seeing them in travel collections just makes me really happy. So I'm glad to uh, have kept them for this spread in particular because I love that they all fit on here fairly perfectly. I'm not going to add any twine to these. I did I did think about that for a hot second there, but um, just like from the last time when we did a video and I had a tag page, I felt like I was going to run the risk of it being too bulky and preventing my spread from closing properly. So because of that, I decided to not do any twine. And instead, what I'm going to do here in just a second is I'm actually going to pull over my puffy sticker sheet and take the puffy sticker stars to add into those um, twine holes, which you'll see here in just a second. Before I do that, I will go ahead and chop off all of the pieces that are interacting with the edges and throw those pieces away. Don't need them. And then here's where I'm going to do the stars. And it turns out looking really cute. So it's almost like a brad um, is kind of the feeling that it gives me having those on there. I did make sure to add black on top of the red because I felt like if I put a green star on top of the red tag that it would just make it feel a little bit too Christmassy. So instead I used black on the red and then I used a variety of colors on the rest of them. Um, you know, in order to fill those in. For the photo portion, I debated using some of these other die cuts that I've got left, but nothing was really doing it for me. So I pulled out my stamp set and there was one that had an arrow and it said in awe of this, which I thought was perfect for this particular story. Um, because what this is documenting is this huge wall that you can see there that's kind of like a tree sculpture wall. So my Uncle Tommy, who lives out in Montana, um, this is what he does. So he's actually kind of a, uh, he's a finder of things <laughs> is, um, part of what he does but one of one of the things that he's really got a knack for is he he goes out and finds these twisted juniper trees that grow off um off of mountainsides and he and they're they're not alive anymore so he will cut pieces of them off and like roll it down the mountains and bring it home and then turn those into sculptures or furniture or all that kind of stuff so he actually created that wall for this, um, I think it's a restaurant maybe. So my mom took a picture of him in front of it and it just made a whole lot of sense to call, you know, to label that in awe of this. So I stuck that on there and I believe I put another puffy sticker on there as well and then called that a day. So we are moving on to the last full spread in this album. And, um, this was, just some random photos that they took from a dinner that they went to. At least those are the two smaller photos. And then the photo on the left side that says Bozeman on it was um, a picture that my aunt had sent over to us. And I believe it was from Snapchat, but it was definitely a photo that they had taken while they were there and just the sunset. And it makes a lot of sense to me to end a page or to end this album with a sunset almost like putting a close on the travels um and just an fyi they did go to bozeman my uncle used to live there he has since moved to a different town um but he lived for a while in bozeman so we would go and visit him there and this must have been you know one of the last times that my mom and and her family went and traveled to bozeman to see them because now they go to wherever the new place is. Um, 
So on this spread, I'm trying to figure out how to use some of these other embellishments that I've got remaining, which ones would make the most sense. I'm having a hard time picking because I don't have a whole lot left and I really just want to use up what I can from this kit. I will say as a, you know, as a, a little side comment here that using one kit to document an entire album like this, um, is really a great way to use your products. So by, first of all, by limiting the supplies that you're using, you're going to, um, be able to get your spreads done a little quicker because you have to make decisions based on what you have. And sure, maybe you don't absolutely love every little tiny detail. Maybe there are some things that's just like done is better than perfect. Um, but never have I ever gone back to one of these albums and been like, oh, I wish I wouldn't have put that embellishment there. Like it, it really doesn't matter because what, what actually matters is the photos and the words, right? So for me, using one kit to make an album like this is always beneficial because it allows me to get it done, to get the stories told, um, and to feel really good about that. So I've gone ahead, I've added those into the album, and now we're moving on to the very last spread for today. This one's going to be super simple. I am going to tape down this photo, which is everybody waiting in the airport to go back home. So I'm taping that down into the section that I left blank there. I've got a couple of these little like banner flags, and this one is black and it says, um, you are here, which I thought was kind of, you know, clever. Stuck that down, put that in the book. We're going to stick everything back together and then we'll slow back down for the end of this video. All right, friends. So that completes my last spreads, my last four spreads for this traveler's notebook. So I'll just flip them really through them really quick. So we have the first one, the second one, the third one, and then this last page here at the back. Um, now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to take this off screen, um, to bind this book back together. So what I will do is I, for Christmas this year, I got the book binding tool and I haven't had a chance to use it yet. So, um, this time around, I'm not going to film it just because I need to learn how to do it first. So I'm going to take this to the side. I'm going to stitch it closed, um, just using a white embroidery floss with all six strands. And then once I have this all the way put back together, I'll do a quick flip through video for you guys, just so you can see how everything turned out with this album. But I am very happy with it. It is going to be chunky. Um, and it will also help when it is bound for all of these pages not to come out like this. It will hold it a little bit tighter together there in the middle. Um, but it will have some bend to it because, you know, there's a lot of pages in there. This is a this is a chunky little album, but I definitely really like it. So I am going to go ahead, take this aside and do that. Then I will have another video coming up today that will just be a couple minutes. I probably will just flip through it to music since there's not really a whole lot of storytelling for me to talk about during this one. And since pretty much the entire thing was made with one single kit. So that's what we're going to do. If you guys enjoyed seeing these last four spreads come together, I would love a thumbs up down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see all of the future content I've coming your way. I will be back again after the flip through um, later next week with some additional content with lots of different kits on the way. So very excited for that. Hopefully I will see you then. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I will catch you in the next video. Bye friends.